Hi everyone, good morning. And welcome to this third day of SIG Software Week. Uh, we've been running this Software Week for a couple of years now and it has become kind of a tradition to have the third day dedicated to an area of, of uh, interesting applications. And uh, for this year's third day, the uh, topic is Smart Sustainable Cities. Um, which is kind of an overarching interest for the three organizations behind this day, SIX and Ericsson and Intel. Uh, we have been involved in different activities from sometimes in collaboration, but uh, sometimes on our own, dealing with uh, smart, sustainable cities of different kinds. Uh, you should regard this as, a, as, as kind of an umbrella term for this day, uh, that we try to fit everything together under this umbrella. Um, my name is Marcus Bülund and I'm a senior scientist at SIX. I also direct one of SIX five research groups called People Technologies. And just about everything that we do in this group is about Internet of Things, one way or the other. Uh, so this is actually at the very heart of what we do in, in my group. So it is really exciting for me to be here today to host um, this Applications Day. And I will spend about 15 minutes here uh, saying a few words about the topic of the day, uh, to set the stage, kind of, uh, before I hand over the microphone to a couple of keynote speakers and, and other talks throughout this morning session. And I will get back to the agenda uh, further on as well. But starting out talking about one of the central themes in this title, which is Internet of Things. You can see it typed here in the title, Internet of Things in Commercial Properties, Venues and Public Spaces. Why have we selected that particular thing? Well, first off, uh, SIX is about Internet Technology or IT, uh, and the inter Internet of Things is, of course, very important to us. So that is one of the clear focus for this day. Uh, and I want to say a few words about the Internet of Things. I'm pretty sure that all of you have a clear idea of what this topic is. Um, but what is it to us? What is it to me, more specifically? Well, you can describe Internet of Things in many different ways. And, and this is one picture that I would like to, uh, that I, I, I particularly uh, like, in order to understand why is Internet of Things more than just a buzzword? Why is it something that we should care about? So if you look back, um, maybe some 25 years back, and see what type of development we've seen in IT and the consequences of that development, uh, you can see that we have uh, entered a digital arena. We now live our lives uh, in a digital arena in a very different way than we used to do just 25 years ago. Uh, we do business in this digital cloud. Uh, we are social in the cloud. We work in the cloud. We exercise and we do all sorts of stuff on a digital arena, which wasn't present only 25 years ago. And there are a number of different services and technologies that are added to this um, to give us the digital presence. What Internet of Things will do is that it will bring back the connection to all these things that are in our physical presence to add to that picture. So what you've seen in the twen last 25 years is us uh, entering the digital arena, and now the digital arena will loop back to all the stuff that surrounds us, the things, the washing machines. We've been talking about that for a very long time. It's a bit ridiculous, but everyone keeps bringing up the washing machine as one such thing. But, but all the components of houses, of energy systems, of what we play with, uh, the things we use for being social, all the things in our physical presence. So that is what Internet of Things is all about. It's to get back to the physical arena again. And that will actually create a loop, which I find really interesting. And looking at this picture here, you may find the situation a bit monochrome. Everything on the right-hand side here is colorful and exciting, and you can kind of sense the, 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 the feeling of being social in this digital arena. But what is it all about in this Internet of Things place? Um, we don't really know that yet because we haven't tried it for real. And that is one of the reasons that we are here today to discuss that further. But, but you can do this thought experiment of, of going back 25 years to 1989 
uh, all of you seem to have been around in 1989, I think, so most of you can do this experiment. And you can think about what the day was typically like in 1989. You didn't have Facebook. Uh, very few people e used email at that time. People used computers to type letters in WordPerfect 5.1 in DOS in order to print them and send them on snail mail. How many of you do that today? No one. We didn't buy anything on the internet. We didn't do business on the internet. Everything was physical. So now think what has happened during these 25 years. It's amazing what kind of development we've seen, business-wise, socially, democracy, in all types of fields we've seen a revolution due to this development. Now, if you take this one step further and project these changes 25 years ahead, I don't think that any of us can understand exactly what that will be all about, but I can promise you for sure that after 25 years it will not be this monochrome, but instead it will start to get uh, uh, convincingly more sparkling uh, as we see the future of Internet of Things. So this is a uh, development that I can promise you, and this is the feeling I would like to, you to have during this day, that we don't know exactly what the Internet of Things will be, but for the purpose of many different fields, it will be an exciting revolution, that one, I can promise. Um, so I'm not the only one speculating about the future of Internet of Things, of course. Um, the screen is substantially smaller than I expected it to be, but I think most of you can recognize the Gartner hype cycle here. And this is the most recent one, um, dealing with emerging technologies. And Well, if you could see, and if this would work, you would see that on top of the, uh, of the peak of inflated expectations up here, you have Internet of Things now. It's actually uh, peaking right now, and it has pushed down uh, the big data uh, area down to the throw of dissolution, or it's approaching the throw of dissolution. So it's very fun to hear to today to talk about the Internet of Things for that particular matter. Um, but that is not the reason I show this picture, because um, this picture also brings at least two paradoxes. For many of us who has worked with Internet of Things for, for well, two decades now, since the mid-90s, actually, we started to work with this technology. Then it was called ubiquitous computing and then pervasive computing, and in Europe we called it ambient computing for a while, but it's, it's basically the same thing. Why is it only at that level on this hype cycle? Why is it peaking on the, on, on the peak of um, inflated expectations now? Why is it not here on the plateau of productivity after 20 years? Well, I say that one reason behind this is that this is not a matter of technological maturity. The technology behind the Internet of Things is fairly mature in many different fields. It's the markets that are behind in this way. And of course, there are many different reasons for that, but I, I would like to have that as an open question for you um, to think about during this day. Why is it that technology is quite mature, but the productivity of this technology is way behind? Why do we see that? I, I would like to see Internet of Things way on this side. So that is one paradox. Another paradox is, is actually brought up by, the, by, by Gartner in their latest report when they say that we also discovered that the Internet of Things were starting to have an impact, especially at earlier stages of the hype curve, meaning that we can see impact of this type of technology, despite the fact that it's only on this slope coming up here. It's only been on the hype curve for four years, by the way, so it's, it's a fairly new concept even for, for Gartner. Uh, and that is something that we have thought a lot about. And it's also one of the reasons that we have set the subtopic to be slightly different than you typically would expect talking about smart, sustainable cities. So we would like to, for the purpose of this day at least, to introduce a shift in focus here. Typically, when you talk about smart, sustainable cities, you talk about the smart home. So there has been a hope to see a great push of Internet of Things in the smart home and see that drive the market for a number of years now, but we haven't really seen that happening yet. Uh, every year we say that, well, maybe next year, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, same thing with smart grids. Smart grids are developing rapidly, but it has not been the driver for Internet of Things yet. Uh, transportation, likewise. Um, we haven't seen that being the driver for this type of technology. There is a lot of experimentation, a lot of people talking about it, but it's not driving the market. So for that reason, we would like to shift the focus to 
three other areas that we think may be a bit more promising to this end, um, such as big public venues gathering lots and lots of people at the same time, arenas for example, um, commercial uh, buildings and commercial facilities like office spaces, can that be a better driver for increasing the speed of innovation in the area of Internet of Things uh, or shopping malls? And we believe that these three areas provide a very great or interesting blend of great commercial interest uh, and also adding to this these interesting properties that public places uh, exhibit, transportation, facilities of different kinds and also automation and other stuff. Um, so this is where we try to keep the focus of this day to see if we can find a better platform for driving uh, and increasing the speed of innovation. And let's see if that works out. Uh, and please provide feedback during the day on these thoughts as well. Um, right. Okay, so so much about the topic of the day. Uh, the speakers will dive into it, this in much greater detail today and I'll hope that you all have a different picture and view of this uh, by lunchtime today. Uh, so, the agenda today, we have divided the morning session here in three different blocks. So we begin uh, with three excellent keynotes. Uh, first off is Johan Falk from Intel Corporation. Uh, then we have Jan Höller from Ericsson and then Intel Labs Europe with um, Ralph Graffier, uh, who's going to give uh, somewhat more extended keynotes uh, for this morning. And then we break for a short coffee break. Uh, we have such a packed schedule today that, that the coffee breaks are really short, but I hope you can live with that. Um, to provide some more perspectives from industries that are actually already now experiencing productivity in the area of smart sustainable cities and Internet of Things. Um, so we have Fredrik Sandqvist from, from Core Service Management. Um, unfortunately, Anders Trana from Telia Sonora had to cancel in the last minute. He should have been here today. I regret that. Uh, we have Joachim Lindborg from Sustainable Innovation, Per Bjellnes from Turin, <coughs> uh, who promised a very exciting live demo. Uh, that's going to be interesting to see. Um, and we also have Stefan Henningsson, and I'm very happy uh, from, from the World Wild Wildlife Foundation, and I'm very happy that he could come here today to give his perspectives on IoT and sustainability. Uh, ensuring that we can no longer just talk about sustainability, but also uh, deliver something to that end. Uh, that is greatly missed so far. Uh, we have then a, a small, short leg stretch break again, because otherwise you will all fall asleep, regardless of how exciting this is. And we will dive into some of the more down-to-earth, practical, technological uh, features with three current examples of things that is actually happening right now. So we have <coughs> Lars Ronfeldt from Jansi, uh, we have Alex Jonsson from Evo Things, and we have Joachim Westlund from Shortcut Lab coming here to give you some more hands-on details about what they are doing. Before we break for lunch. Uh, so this is a bit of a different day than the others because we have a different agenda for <coughs> the afternoon. Um, in a smaller group than, than, than uh, who is present here, we will have and conduct a hackathon after lunch. Uh, that will be guided by Joachim Eriksson from SIX, uh, that will include tutorials on IoT, current IoT practices, uh, and also uh, allowing the participants to, to get their hands dirty and do some coding work uh, throughout the afternoon. Uh, we have had a special round of invitations for this. It's been an open invitation round. I think we have a few seats available if anyone would like to jump up and say that, hey, I'm interested in, 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 in trying this out. Talk to us in the breaks and we'll see if we can find seats uh, available for you. Otherwise, this is for the people who are already confirmed to this particular event. Um, this afternoon, we will also kick off an IoT challenge in the field uh, of smart sustainable cities. Um, so today is actually the kickoff for that challenge, and this will last for a couple of months, uh, until um, January 18, I think we have said that this is uh, the deadline for contributions. And our hope here <coughs> is that we will stimulate, by having great prices for this challenge, uh, stimulate some, some productivity and innovation 
among people who are not typically uh, showing up on, on these events and, and uh, present demos, etc. Um, so we will talk a bit more about that this afternoon. If you find this interesting but will not be here this afternoon, come talk to me in one of the breaks and I will give you some more details. Uh, but basically, the, uh, the agenda for this challenge is that we kick off today and you formally have to register a contribution for the competition by October 31st. Uh, then you can work on the contribution up until January 18, after which we will do an evaluation and the winners will be announced during the J Focus conference <coughs> on February 2 to 4. So, so much about that IoT challenge. Finally, before I hand over the microphone to Johan Falk, a few details for the day. Uh, we have two Wi-Fi networks present here. Um, you can see one of them present in the program. I think it's listed in the first one on my slide here. It's listed in the program. Another one you can find here if the first one uh, fails for some reason. So you have two of them. Um, we also have a Twitter hashtag if you are are, are uh, into Twitter, please uh, let the world know that you are here. We are video streaming this event, so we allow questions from viewers outside of the room as well, uh, if we can manage that. Uh, so please make use of that hashtag in Twitter. And finally, uh, please stay for lunch. It's free, it's included, and that is one of the main purposes for us doing <coughs> this, is to provide a platform for us to discuss and, and, and talk about interesting topics. So stay for lunch and discuss uh, all of these interesting matters. So that's so much uh, for me at this time.